be assertive and kind. And so this is the way I wrote it out, but there's a phrase that I used to use quite a bit in my YouTube videos back in the day, and that is to be tender aggressive, to be tender aggressive. It's this, it's this polarity. And it's like, once you, when you get, the, it's just so funny because everything balances itself out like the yin and yang, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of value in understanding just that one little symbol, regardless of, you know, make of it what you will. But there's a lot to be understood there that if a woman, if you love a woman, and she respects you, your level of respecting her, almost if you notice the yin yang symbol, it's so beautiful. It's, you know, and, and as, as a Catholic, maybe I'm not supposed to be talking about that, but I break the rules, I don't know. Lord have mercy on me, <laughs> whatever, right? I don't, it's a symbol and, it, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, merit and wisdom in the symbol. All black and all white don't exist. I'm starting to get a, my voice is getting thrown off here. Well, I'm gonna let it be what it is. So, all black and all white don't exist. Within the black, there's a little bit of white, and within the white, there's a little bit of black. Because as a man, if you command, if you demand respect through the love that you give, you get the love through the respect. It's, it's a little bit of both. That's what I'm trying to say. So to be, to be tender aggressive is to have a little bit of both. You, you can't be totally red pill or blue pill. Let me put it that way in, that, in those terms. You gotta be purple pill if you're gonna make relationships work. This is something that Rolo Tomasi says. He says purple pill, a guy is purple pill. To be, to be red pill, in my opinion, is, is maybe to be um, alpha in an imbalanced way where there's no tenderness. But that's not really true alpha. True alpha males have a tenderness to them. Alpha male, in my opinion, is the, is the well-balanced man. But of course, the world makes it seem as if that's all toxic. So to be assertive and to be kind essentially means set up your boundaries, speak your truth, tell them the way it is, but at the same time, be kind. And when it comes to women, this is a, this is, key for understanding this is super important for understanding right because a lot of times men we don't we think we don't understand women because we're not paying attention to them we're not paying attention to them we are the way we are as men because we're more firm that's why they say man is like a rock a man is firm and he's generally going to be the way he is for the most part except for when we're being effeminate but a woman has cycles did you notice this Women have cycles, they have monthly cycles and their hormones change based on the time of the month. And there are gonna be times in the month that she wants you to be alpha. She wants you to grab her and be strong with her and be aggressive with her. But you try that same attitude when she, you know, the, when she's ovulating and she's at that time of the month, you try that same attitude when she's premenstrual and she's going into a different time of the month and you're gonna ruin, her, you're gonna screw up your relationship because you're gonna be off, off beat. That's when she needs you to be soft. She needs you to be kind. She needs you to listen a little bit more. She's feeling a little bit needy, right? Tender, aggressive. I've done entire videos on this, so I'm gonna kind of cut off at that point there. But those are the five principles of biblical masculinity. Let me see, I didn't get that one out. Be assertive and kind. Uniformity with God's will. Be mission focused. Know your standards with women, know your boundaries in relationships, be assertive and kind. The five principles of biblical masculinity. So if you, already, if you haven't already known, right, I'm coming back to YouTube a little bit, I took a few days off. I had some, some hangups, hiccups lately. Um, my account got hacked. Um, <laughs> I, got, um, I got my very first strike. I got, a, I got a YouTube violation strike for a video from like two years ago or I, I, I use the CV word, you know what I'm talking about, that, ma that magic word you're not supposed to talk about. So I got my first strike and then, because I had to take a break and I was like, man, what am I gonna do moving forward? And, and I wanna just redouble on my mission. I started looking, at, I really just diving deep into the analytics on my channel. And I realized, based on the charts, that I'm shadow banned. I'm shadow banned here on YouTube. And I know the exact date and the exact video that they started shadow banning me on. Because I was, my reach was above a million a day, 
for about a year when I started, came back to making videos in 2001. For a year, I was, uh, was getting a reach of over a million. Then on September, 3rd, September 18th, 2021, it dropped to under 500,000 reach a day. Reach basically means what they're going to, sh what they, how they're showing your videos so, for people to watch. And I noticed that my views have dropped significantly. And I'm over here blaming myself. I'm like, man, maybe it's because I'm talking about Jesus too much, <laughs> right? <laughs> blaming you guys. Um, and then I'm, bl and I'm blaming God. Maybe because I'm talking about Jesus too much. Maybe because I'm, I'm speaking about things that are so countercultural. And I'm telling these guys who, you know, they, one of the things Dan Kennedy says is don't be an unwelcome prophet. Don't tell people stuff they don't want to hear. And I'm over here telling you guys stop fornicating, you know, and, and living pleasure seeking lives. But people don't want to hear that stuff. That's like taking candy away from a baby. Right. And so I'm like, man, maybe just people will not resonate with my, my message anymore. And so I'm really just trying to like rack my brain for what, what I'm going to do next. But, you know, I, I've said, I said, forget it. I'm just going to keep doing lives. I'll keep doing lives with you guys right here. And I'm just going to come straight out and be transparent about what I'm doing and why I'm doing it with you guys moving forward, right? I, I've been dragging my feet on this, but I'll spell it out for you like this. If you don't already know, if you're new here for some reason, you don't recognize that my mission is to make men strong again. When, when we talk about uniformity with God's will and be mission focused, that's my mission. That's very clear. I was a strong, I was a strong kid. I was being a strength coach. I'm a strong man and I, am, I attract men to me that want to be strong. My mission is to make men strong again, not because I chose it, because that's where God placed me in this planet. But to what end, right? So I have to ask myself, like, what is the point of being uh, a strong man, being strong myself and making men strong? Well, I believe that it's up to men to build, to, to save society and by building strong families. I believe that it is up to us to turn this boat around and it's where the future is. And I know, again, this is not a popular message. I understand, but it's with marriage and family because with families, our future sons, our future daughters, our children's, the future of our society, right? Our children's children. That's, those are the people that the values we impart based on the way we live our lives and sacrifice today are gonna carry forth dignity for mankind. If we live like these guys are telling us to, which is purely YOLO lifestyle, right? There's those who say, oh, I'm just, I'm just watching the whole thing burn down and I'm gonna enjoy myself along the way. Then you're, not only are you not contributing to the generativity that's associated with being a king in your life, not only are you not supporting generativity, supporting life, but you are a anchor. You are a drain on the system because you're out there doing all the things, pissing and shitting all over the place that we're going to have to clean up at some point. And I could get into the specifics of it, but you know what I'm talking about. How are you behaving in a pro-life? And I'm not talking about abortion. A pro-life or an anti-life way. Pro-life is generativity. The word generativity comes from to generate. It's where we get the word generation. And it is the quintessential quality of being a king. And when I talk about being a king, I'm not talking about being King Louis VIII or anything like that. I'm literally talking about the mystical king that embodies the being quality in every man. If y'all haven't figured it out, that's what I mean when I talk about king. Because Christ is the only king. But we all have that imago Dei, that image of God within us, that, 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 that being quality that is what? Order creating. The being quality within us is what is from which order emerges. And order, in order, for, in order for order to emerge, what does it need? Material. What is material? Material is, is ideas, sentiments, souls, wrapped in flesh and material. To be a king is to be order creating, world building, generative, creating generations, family, folks, fellas. That's the only way we're gonna turn this around. 
if we go with this whole every man for himself BS or MGTOW to death, you're just a useless eater, sucking air and wasting time. But then again, that's just my opinion. I'm being a little arrogant with regard to that. We've fallen so far away, but I am convinced that we could turn this boat around. 